hello and welcome once again uh, in this video tutorial i want to talk about hb elect i want to demonstrate a quick way of doing this uh, test in the lab and hb electrophoresis is a very important test that we do in the lab uh, it detects or it identify your hemoglobin type there are different types of hemoglobin we have the um, hemoglobin a we have the hemoglobin A, which is adult hemoglobin. Most adults who are healthy have this hemoglobin. Then we also have fetal hemoglobin or hemoglobin F, usually in uh, newborn babies, usually after uh, several months, all the hemoglobin F will be converted to hemoglobin A. So these first two types of hemoglobins are the healthy hemoglobins or the normal hemoglobins. Then we have ones that are a little bit abnormal and we say so because they are not able to perform their function as expected. Normal hemoglobin carries oxygen around the body. When there's a problem with the hemoglobin, such as in hemoglobin S, which is usually in um, sickle cell patients, you realize that they are not able to carry the oxygen around the body. And this happens because the hemoglobin S causes the red blood cells to become stiff and then sometimes eventually sickling and then what happens is that they get stuck into capillaries and then they cause severe and chronic pain for such people you also have hemoglobin c which does not even carry oxygen it's not able to carry oxygen we have also e which is predominant in um, people in south um, i think south asia so they have the southeastern part of Asia, they have this hemoglobin E. We also have, I think, A2, hemoglobin A2, A2. We also have O and we have D, so many of them. Okay, so in this video, we'll quickly demonstrate how this test is performed in the lab. And as the test is running, we'll talk about the principle and any other important thing so quickly um to run you need your controls i have three controls here i have the ss control and then i have the as control and then i have the ac control we prepare this in a very simple way you take about three drops of blood and then you put um six drops of tap water and then you mix and then you get your hemolysis. This one we know they are um, they are genotypes already. Okay, so this is a patient sample. We don't know the genotype. We want to do it. So I will take three drops of blood and then put it in this tube, and I'll add some water to it. Just uh, ordinary water. The aim is to lyse the red blood cell and then release the hemoglobin so that it can migrate all those membrane. Okay, so I'll do that quickly. I have my pasteur pipette here. So I'll open my sample and then this is an empty plane tube. I'll transfer an amount in there, say three drops, one, two, three. Okay, and then I'll dispose of my crushed air pipette. Okay, so, so I'll be having something like this. So I'll add about six drops of distilled water to it, or uh, ordinary tap water. So I have watered here, and then I add one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Okay, so I have something like this. You can use this, but it's looking very thick. So I'm adding a little more water so this is fine so we are going to use this becomes my hemolysis very simple way of preparing it so i'll make sure that it lyses the uh, red blood so this is my patient sample i'm going to label it patient 21 okay so this is what we are going we don't know the electric uh, the genotype of the sample and we are going to test for it okay so let me put my water aside so i take cellulose membrane so i take it i put it here and then i bloat it a little to 
take away the SS uh, buffer. I'll take you through all the um, components later as the um, test is run. We'll have some time so that we, do that. we talk. Right now, I just want to do the test so that you have an idea of how it's done. Okay, so you need um, an applicator that you can use to transfer uh, an amount of the blood onto the loss membrane. Okay, so I have this. This is just a, a micropipette tip that I'm using to transfer. Okay, so I'm doing my um, AS first. I want to create my AS band first. So I open my sample and then I pick some. Okay, so I have it here and then I'm going to create the band here. So I'm going to create two of them in that way. So this will be my AS okay and then i'm going to make my ac ac control so i'm also going to pick it okay so i'm also going to create two bands here one here and then another one here let me add more here okay let's pause it then my last control is my ss control that's my ss control so going to aspirate and then put here one and then two ss control okay then i'm going to also put my patient Hemolyze it also. This is what we want to determine. So I'm going to put at the last end. So that will be here. Okay. I don't have enough space, so I'm not going to create a second band. I'm just going to do one. And that's perfectly fine. Usually create multiple bands maybe more than one just to make sure that the ones that don't migrate well you have another one to use okay so basically that is it after preparing the band you take the uh, membrane to the chamber you put it inside and then you start it you time yourself for um 20 25 minutes and then your results will show okay so i'm going to take it quickly to the um chamber okay so i'll set it in and then i'll let you look at it so here you are this is my chamber and i've just dropped the detate membrane onto the bridge and then within here we have the alkaline buffer uh, port on this side and then that side okay so this is how the chamber look and this is the power pack that is supplying the power onto the chamber okay. so basically that's it i'll close it and then i can start it for so um basically it's going to move from the negative that's the cathode to the anode that's to the positive okay so i'm going to start the machine it's already preset to about 250 volts so between 250 to 300 volts is fine and then you can set this machine for about uh, 15 to 20 or to 25 minutes so we'll let it run and then we'll discuss a few things okay the principle so the principle is very simple the um the hemoglobin the various types they have different surface charge so they have different surface uh, electrical electrical charge which is determined by their amino 
acid structure. So it causes these uh, different variants of hemoglobin to migrate at different rates on the cellulose acetate paper. So you realize that hemoglobin A has a higher or a faster migration rate than any of them. So when our result comes out, we will be expecting um, we have this. Okay. And then we have our origin where we apply the blood sample. So we have them here, them here, them here, them here. And then if this blood is AA, we we'll realize that it will move and mark here. So we are expecting a typical AA to move and mark at this point. And then we are expecting an uh, F to mark somewhere here. We are expecting an S to mark somewhere below here. And then we are expecting a C to mark somewhere here. Okay, so if we have um, our blood sample marking here, we'll be looking at AA here, and then with an AS, the S will mark. So let's say the first one is AA, and then the second one with AS, the A will mark, and then the S will mark at the S region, which is below the... Um, the uh what do we call it the a so this will be a s but mind you there is f f will just be below but mostly it's converted when the person starts growing so we hardly see it but it's also there it can happen so from the second one will be a s then the third one will be the a will be here and then the c will be here so we'll be having something like a c so a c so basically so these are the three main common ones that we see in the lab, AA, AS, and then AC. And then for SS, you realize that it will mark just one here at the S side. All the proteins will migrate to this point and then you will be having SS. So basically, that's about the HB electrophoresis. Our then it's still running i hope i hope i hope you get it. i hope it makes sense to you i hope it makes sense to you so a a all the proteins will move and migrate here and then with a s some of the protein will come that's the a portion of the protein will come here and then the s portion will be here then with the a c you see the a here and then the c on the same line and then with the s you see uh, everything migrating to this point don't mind this one here yeah. okay so when i bring the final results out we are going to uh, see how it looks like i hope you get it but while we wait let's talk about one final thing that people usually ask that is um when two people are about to marry they want to do this uh, hb electrophoresis test to you know um know whether they are compatible or not so let's use this diagram let's say the male is aa that has the genotype aa and then the female has the genotype as so um what's the chance of they producing an unhealthy baby so they have about 50 percent chance because this this can bind with this and then produce an aa or uh, the father can supply this and the mother can supply this one and then they produce a which is a normal baby or this one combined to the s father can supply a mother can supply the s and then produce a as baby so for a father who is a a and the mother who is a s or two individuals one is a s one is a a we have about 50 percent chance of producing AA baby and then we also have 50% chance of producing an AS baby. What if the um, both couples are AS? So in that case, in that case you'll be having about um, a 25% chance of having 
an AA baby and then you are having 50% chance of having AS and then another 25% chance of having SS. So with this combination it's very dangerous because the likelihood of producing a sickle is very 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 high or let's say a child with the S hemoglobin is very very high. You, have, you just have 25% chance of producing uh, an AA baby. So you usually don't advise this combination. You usually will want um, you at least the mother or the father to have the AA hemoglobin. But in any case, people still go on to um, to marry because of of course love and they deal with the consequences later okay so usually sickle cell patients they easily get fatigued and when there's crisis they suffer severe pain sometimes very chronic pains so it's it also predisposes them to infections and other complications so it's a very <laughs> unpleasant situation to be in but it happens and people experience that um, our test is complete after 20 minutes and then this is our result. Our first one was the um, AS control. So you could see this is the A band and this is the AS. So I did two of them. So this one is AS and the second one was AC. So this one is a little bit faint. You might not see it well. So this is the A band and then the C is somewhere here. So that's AC. Then the third one was the SS band that we created two of them. So you realize that it's slightly below the A, so it's here, but all comes together. So that's SS band, SS band, and that's our uh, sample. Our sample is AA because all the hemoglobin have migrated to the first line. So basically, that's the result. And that's how HB electrophoresis is done, a quick and fast way of doing it. So thank you. I hope you learned something.